Well, hey, welcome back. This is the Spotlight on Success Show, and you know who I am. But now you're going to meet someone else, someone very popular behind the scenes here in Hollywood, Connie Criswell. Connie, <laughs> thank you for being here, my thank dear. You. Thank you. You are such a sweet person. <laughs> Nobody would ever think that you create such horrible monsters. <laughs> but you don't do just it. do monsters, you do all sorts of wonderful things. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to talk to the, our 4,000 viewers. Okay. Right now, you are meeting a lovely young lady who works behind the scenes in an area of makeup artistry that is not often talked about by those people who are the department heads on the shows. Oh, well, yes, they talk about it among themselves. But the final creation is part of this young lady's work. And uh, you're going to know why in just one minute, all right? And that minute has now just flown by very quickly. <laughs> and you do hair punching, mm -hmm. you do ventilating or tying. Mm -hmm. You have made some of the most exquisite, most realistic makeup, hair makeup projects that I believe I've personally ever seen. Thank you. And I had no idea. I had <laughs> honestly, you know, you know, we we know that there are people who come into the shops and people that come into the shops and do this sort of thing, <laughs> but they're never talked to. No, they're never visited with. Mm -mm. But today we're making history. The entire world <laughs> is getting to meet one of the young ladies who is known in the Hollywood community as an expert on hair nodding and, 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 and ventilating. And punching. I mean, and punching, and yeah. punching. Now, you know the punching thing? Now, hair ventilating or hair nodding or hair tying, these, all, these terms all refer to the technique that's used to actually get the hair knotted or tied onto the netting yes. of a hair lace piece or a wig of some sort or whatever. Um, but now, and, and, and we've shown that, you're, you're, you're going mm -hmm. to see you're going to see Connie do her magic uh, right here on MUA TV right after the interview. And that is, uh, there's another area of working with hair. Now, we, when we say hair work, you know, we old timer makeup artists, all we think of is laying hair, laying, making beards, you know, laying hair, whether it be wool or whether it be real hair. Um, but this goes way beyond it. Okay, this goes beyond it. Now, the thing that really fascinates me is the hair punching. Everybody I, loves that. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I went to um, uh, Barney Berman's lab mm -hmm. yesterday. I worked with him last year. Yes, yeah. remarkable makeup artist. Yeah. Really, really uh, outst outstanding work. And I was introduced to Con, mm -hmm. I believe, so and, uh, dearest friends. and another young lady. Aida. Aida. Aida That's right, there. Aida. Yes. And, uh, and you'll, you will meet them as well, all right, when we do the uh, tour, when we show you the tour of the Barney Berman Proteus Studios out in Pacoima, you'll see, you'll meet these people, and you'll see how tedious the work is. Oh, super tedious. It's incredibly <laughs> tedious. It's now, for crazy people, that's what now, I say. <laughs> now, I want you to explain to our audience, our worldwide audience, exactly what hair punching is. Hair punching is taking a hair and putting it directly or pu pushing it directly into the appliance. Yes. So what you're doing is you're taking a needle. I was, I'll show in my demonstration. You're taking a beading needle. And the reason you use a beading needle is because it has a really large eye. Yes. And so you clip off, the eye looks like this. You clip off the top edge and then the bars will look like that. And then you clip off the second edge and your needle ends up looking like this. Mm -hmm. You put it inside a wig making holder. Yes and then you take the hair and you push it into the skin. Yes. And so it looks like the hair is literally growing out of the face. Yes. And everybody loves that. Yes. Because it looks so real and it looks so much more real than ventilating. And if you have a camera right up on a skin and it's a tied piece, oftentimes you're gonna see the knot. Yes. Whereas with um, hair punching, yes. you don't see a knot because yes. it's going directly right into the skin. Yes. Do you, do, now you, you, obviously you're familiar with this, all makeup artists are familiar with lace front. Yes. Lace fronts. I can envision lace fronts being made out of silicone and hmm. punched. Just the lace front, just mm -hmm. 
what you normally would have made with lace only and hair being tied to it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's something that might be coming up in the near future? Something that can be applied very... Do you mean like a wig applied to a silicone appliance? Well, just the lace fronts. It, it, so that when you go into a tight shot, a very tight shot, mm -hmm. you don't see the actual lace being glued down. Now I know that a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of the hairstylists and makeup artists will trim the lace all the way down, mm -hmm. just to the knot, mm -hmm. so that there is no lace. There's no chance of the lace showing up. But that's very expensive, and it's you know it's a bit of wastefulness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that. If you were working on something where you knew that you had tremendous close-ups, mm -hmm. and I'm not just talking about hair, hair, uh, hair lace fronts, mm -hmm. uh, lace fronts. I'm talking about perhaps even doing overlay silicone, very very thin eyebrow patches mm -hmm. that would be glued down, that would have the hairs mm -hmm. punched into them. Well, that's what is we that did. being done now? Yeah, that's what we did on Tropic Thunder, and Tom Cruise had an appliance that was attached to his forehead and it went all the way down to the base of his neck. He also had another appliance that covered just his chest. Yes. And then he had appliances on his hands. And the reason being is that they wanted to have him, they wanted him to have a really hairy, curly chest. Yes. And they wanted him to have curly arm hair and they wanted him to have a receding hairline and bald pate. Yes. And so the camera was going in close and boy, we got some really close shots. <laughs> his face was right in the center of the screen. I'm not supposed to know this, but I think I saw these pieces yeah. in a so, laboratory yeah. that will remain <laughs> nameless. <laughs> and, and and you're right, they were flawless. Yeah, Re they I mean, to really be. very, very realistic. Yeah. Now, you have to fool the audience. All the, all the silicone, mm -hmm. obviously, is pre-colored. Mm -hmm. It's all intrinsically colored. And then uh, uh, give, us a, give us a rundown of exactly from beginning to end uh, of how you are instructed and how you go about determining exactly how you're going to punch the hair. Well, the first thing you're going to do is, uh, let's say, for my part of that particular appliance, I did all the hair that was around his head to give him the receding hairline. There was another person who worked on the hands, another person who worked on the chest, and another, and then they ended up laying the hair on his face. And so what I ended up doing is when I got my appliance piece, I would draw the direction of how the hair is going to lay on the appliance, and I would use a chalk marker, and you don't want to use anything else because anything could leave a stain on the skin. So you don't want to do that. So I use a chalk marker. I mark my direction on the back of the head. I start color blending my hair. I put it on a drawing mat. And then I slowly take out one hair. Well, I take out a bundle of hair. And then I take the needle. I dip it in a silicone um, adhesive. And then I literally punch, start at the base of the neck. And I start going all the way to the top of the head. And then right along the hairline, we ended up using um, Angora or a mohair mm -hmm. to give it a really soft edge mm -hmm. so that it didn't look like, you know, just regular harsh hair, end. a harsh edge. Yeah, we yes. gave it a really soft, like baby fine hair. Yes, yes. And then that was put on his head. Now, you say that you, you dip the hair first before you punch it, immediately before you punch it, mm -hmm. into... A silicone adhesive. And is there any special silicone adhesive well, that you no, use? No, we, I mean, there's some different kinds that you can get um, at Home Depot or most of the shops have different silicone yes. adhesive. Now, are, are these not like telesis, uh you, you can use telesis, but sometimes it can crystallize and be seen on the skin. I see. So you want to use, sil if you're doing a silicone head, you want to use a silicone a adhesive. A silicone, a regular hardware store brand type of silicone adhesive. Yeah, I've used some of adhesive. that. I've used that, yeah. Yes, that's interesting. Now, do you wear any type of a protective uh, ventilator when you're no, working? No, because they're, well, the thing is, is when you're punching something, if you get a skin right out of the mold, it's yes. going to have toxins coming out. Yes, yes. So we don't usually punch something until it's aired all of its gases yes. and toxins. So it's usually, sometimes it's a day or two before we can punch on now, it. Now, are the silicone pieces washed yes. prior to your, what do you wash, the, do you know what they wash the pieces I with? I don't know what they wash them in. I've, I've heard that they wash them in soap and water, but oftentimes mm -hmm. you need to wash them really good for mm -hmm. us to mm -hmm. punch. To be able to punch. All right. Now, is there any shrinkage at all that you've found in, in, with in working with the silicone? Not so much silicone, but you do see shrinkage with foam. With foam. Oh, appliances. yes. Oh, yes. Um, all right. Now, uh, what's easier to punch, uh, silicone 
gelatin or foam? Oh, goodness. I'd say foam, but gelatin probably looks the best. But it, I guess it depends on what you're filming. Now, wh you know, why do you think gelatin looks the best? It just has a wonderful shine to it that looks like skin. Yes. You know, it has the almost gelatin. like, yeah, it seems like an oily feel. And I believe, I'm trying to remember exactly what they used on Tropic Thunder. I don't know, I don't remember if it was gelatin or silicone, silicone. but I someone else can answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I will bring him in. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble for that. And we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, now, the hair that you, uh, firstly, uh, you, you mentioned drawing mat. I haven't heard that term since I was in New York, <laughs> Pittsburgh, working for Lane Bryant making wigs, mm -hmm. and I used to do it too. Oh my gosh. Um, the, uh, where, where do you buy your drawing mats? Drawing ma mats, you can get them at different um, beauty, well, some beauty supplies have them. I believe um, Nigel's might have them, friends might have yes. them. Now, do, they used to come brothers. in different sizes. Mm -hmm. What, what, what sizes do they not cut? If, I ha if I'm doing a gorilla and I'm tying a spandex suit, I'm going to use thick yak hair. So yes. I'm going to use a really bigger, large yeah. uh, drawing card. Right. You can call it either drawing card drawing or drawing cards, mat. Drawing mats. What thing. they are are two pieces of leather that have teeth, teeth that kind of come together like yeah. this. And you, you, you lay your hair or your fur or whatever it is you're working into them and this way you can pull it and yeah. it, it's like a, it's like a big hackle but yeah so much better but it doesn't stab you and, and it won't stab you <laughs> if you sit on it it doesn't drop blood <laughs> <laughs> it won't hurt you will have to get a tetanus shot if you sit on it and now how does how does one uh, you're a hairdresser right you, i have a cosmetology you have a cosmetology license, but i have license. never worked in a salon i've i did um classical theater for eight years before I got into film and I've been in film for 14 years yes so that's I've been doing wonderful. it for 21 years thank God for you oh. all these apes and all these <laughs> creatures would have all been hairless had it been for you. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is with what we do you don't have to have a cosmetology license right. a lot of it is being taught by someone who knows how to do right. it well you're not working on a on a human head either no and I know a lot of really great wig makers and people who work in makeup effects who do phenomenal hair work who yes. don't have licenses. Yes, yes. And it's just not always required. But when we do um, perming, it, it's helpful, or any kind of hair oh, cutting sure. or coloring, it's helpful to have sure, a license. Sure. To know the yeah, basics. I have a permanent waving secret. Oh, you do? What's that? That I, I can't tell you. It won't be a secret. Oh, I'd right. have to kill you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to I'm gonna share that with all of my MUA TV viewers one day. Because I know that this is something that's never been taught at any other makeup school. Mm. In fact, I don't know that I've even taught it here. And for the first time, uh, it's going to be revealed to the MUA TV audience in February. And it's a, a technique that I've never seen done. And believe me, I've seen them all. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's working with real hair. And it's going to be a hoot. You'll have to watch the show. I'd love to but, see it. Now, anyway, now let's, let, me, let me find out. Now, how, before we talk about what you've done. Yeah, yeah. And you're gonna, you're just gonna be blown away, okay? B blown away by what this young lady, this beautiful young lady, has worked on. But how did you get into this? I mean, hair punching is such a specialty. I mean, I know. I mean, and you're not only until recently have there been so many labs. Mm -hmm. So getting a job as a hair puncturist <laughs> is uh, what is the correct term, by the way? Uh, hair, hair puncher. Hair really. puncher. Yeah, or hair technician. Hair Oftentimes technician. You'll see that, and we're usually listed under the special effects um, shop that's listed in the film. I we see. We don't always get credit um, because every name costs money. Yes. So <laughs> sometimes we get credit, sometimes we don't. We have to charge them more. <laughs> I'd love to, but you know. You don't get credit. I just get charged put it on more. My, you know, resume, and hopefully, you know, if someone needs to call for a reference, they'll call for a reference. Right, right, say. darn right. So. And and you are here today because you have a fantastic, fantastic reputation. Thank you. Yes, and oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Believe me. And I have um, a few pictures. As a matter of fact, right here in Makeup Artist Magazine, the 75th uh, issue uh, of Makeup Artist Magazine, right on page. 49, as a matter of fact, there's a picture of the Minotaur right here, and I don't think you, you can see it, but it's on page, so you just turn to page 49, and, and you should, and shame on you if you don't have the 75th anniversary <laughs> issue of Makeup Artist Magazine. You. You've got to have it, all right? <laughs> and on page 49, you're going to see this fabulous Minotaur, of which, how many were made? Oh, I believe we made two suits on that on the second... Um, Narnia film Prince Caspian. Yes, and, and, uh, and you punched 
There was a team of you. Well, there was a team of us, and what happened is the suit was hand-tied on spandex, and there were uh, four of us who did two suits. And a suit takes probably maybe a month, month and a half to make. And then there was another, uh, other people who were punching the hair all yes. on the face of the Minotaur. Yes, yes, yes. And we had, I think, eight Fantastic work. And you did Hellboy? Hell I didn't work on Hellboy. Hellboy, no. too. Nope, I did not work on that. You did not? No. I thought you did. You think you're confusing me with Christina. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I was just right. sitting next to her. I'm sorry. <laughs> but what you did work on here now is um, you did all of this. I have <laughs> a variety of different things in my portfolio, and it's always hard. Now, can we go through each one of these sure. and you can explain sure, exactly absolutely. what they are? Who is this? This is Bill Nye and, and myself, and this was when we played Davy Jones and Pirates of the Caribbean 3. Now look at this, Let me, if I may. That's the This is the, this, the sketch done by... Crash McCreary. Crash McCreary, who we definitely should have as a guest on the show. He's amazing. And he is absolutely amazing. This is a drawing. And uh, he worked uh, at Stan Winston Lab, you many said, years, for, many, for years. many, many years. Well, I I'm can not sure certainly who he's working with now. I can see why. He's, this is just he's, a phenomenal, just, phenomenal yeah, drawing. Incredible. And then the beard work, as you can see, is identical, identical to uh, the drawing. And this was for Pirates of the this Caribbean. This Pirates of the Caribbean uh, three. Three. And myself and another wig maker, Leslie Devlin, we both double teamed on that beard. Yes. It took probably about 30 hours to make that beard because it had so many different colors and then V went through and beaded it. Yes, V Neal. And added so much incredible beauty with all of her beadwork and ribbons and he just looked phenomenal. Yes, looked yeah, it was a and fantastic was character. Scene. And this is none other but Keith Richards. <laughs> that was also for Pirates. Check that out. That was actually a hand-tied beard for one of Johnny Depp's uh, stunt guys. And they ended up using it on Keith Richards because they needed a beard made, and it fit him. So well, it I ended up terrific. doing that. Now, were you were you're on location? Where were you down in the Caribbean? We were in Bahamas, yeah. Yes. And then yeah. we shot a lot up here. I was again. I came in about halfway through filming of Pirates 2 and then finished out 3, but I was there as a contact lens technician for professional vision care. Yes, and yes. I was doing a lot of the lenses. And that's, that's another thing you do. Mm -hmm. You're just amazing. Ah! Oh my God. There's no, <laughs> holding, there's no holding this girl down. I'm really lucky <laughs> to have both these You're jobs. very talented. That's nice. All right, luck comes from the talent. All right, we have here, um, we have here a shot of one of the Morlocks from the new... Nope, um, old. <laughs> from the old. Oh, no, wait. When did it come out? I think it came This is out. the most recent. Yes, the most recent time yes, machine. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is, uh, you remember, the time machine. All right, well, the, the new one, Johnny Elliott, I believe, was the head of the department, the makeup department, I think, uh, <laughs> on this. We used to work together, he and I, at ABC Television many, many moons ago. And uh, this is... That's a Morlock. There's a Morlock. And there you see I'm punching the hair right into the chin. That's my friend Kathy McGowan, another great hair person. And uh, we're both just punching hair right into that face. They had um, uh, hair, let's see, um, hair tech, which was basically hair that's sewn onto this large fabric, and they were using that for the suits. And then we were punching all along the edges of it on yes. the chest line. Yes, so that, that is that amazing. Was on the face. That is amazing. All right, here we go. Now here are. This is a this is a bust. This, this is, is a, a fake head of an actress. I couldn't tell you the name of it, but it was for Six Feet Under, and. That, this is a good example of what a lot of us hair people in the creature shops have to do. Oftentimes they don't give us any time to punch a hairline, so what we'll have to do is do a makeshift hairline. So we'll yes. take a wig, a store-bought wig, we'll tear off the front hairline, we'll glue it down onto the head, and then we just punch the hairline, punch the yes. eyebrows, and See, punch the this. eyelashes. All of this. So all those hairs are all one hair at a time punched right in. All of this hair right here is all punched in. By and then there's a wig right behind that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all of the brows are done as well. Absolutely. And the lashes, I would assume, mm -hmm. as well. That's excellent. That's for six feet under. Six feet under. Now, ah, now this, this looks like we're moving toward Rick Baker time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we have a... Um, Mighty Joe Young. Mighty Joe Young right here. So that would be a spandex suit covering a muscle structure that's been made in the fabrication department and then the actors underneath it and then of course with the mechanical head. So a spandex suit is made very similarly to how a um, wig is made except the hair is double knotted on spandex. 
and it's patterned out like a wig would be patterned out, except it's all done on spandex. So it's at, now when you say spandex, this is a, a stretchable material, stretchable material, and uh, it's either directly onto the skin when they the way, when they put it on, or uh, there's an understructure of some form of padding mm -hmm. to give the musculature. Exactly. All right, and and. Um, uh, who, who, who was the performer here? I believe in that Mighty was John Alexander. John he Alexander. He does a lot of the gorilla work and has forever. For he's years. Amazing. He's excellent. Great guy. I believe I had dinner over at Matthew Mungle's house one time Probably. with John. Yeah. And we have here, um, now this is a, uh, is this from, from Face Off? Or? It is. This is from Face Off. This is Nicolas Cage, and in this movie, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta had to have their faces sliced off and transferred. And so these are both fake bodies of Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. And all the hair on the chest, on the arms, and on the head and the face all had to be punched in to look exactly like the actors yes. for them to do the same. Well, so we had a team of people on this. Yes, yes. So you, these are these are these are actually bodies. These are not the performers. Mm -hmm. Those are bodies. Excellent. Silicone bodies. And you did um, and you did. Uh, who did these? Uh, this was Kevin Yeager's. Kevin Yeager, yes. Yeah, he's phenomenal. He's brilliant. And uh, moving right along, here you see the. Uh, it's John Travolta. Okay, the John. This is John Travolta from the same film. And again, it's the fake body that we did. Right now, this silicone. line that you see around the hairline that is not the edge of of the hair lace. That is part of the film where they were actually drawing where the face was going to be removed. Yeah, where it was laser -wrong. Exactly, where so it's laser So basically the work that I did was I made, uh, we had two people, both Corinne Hansen and Ron Pipes, made these small wigs on, and they put them on the back of the head and then I punched all the hair along the back of the head, all along the hairline and the eyebrows and the um, eyelashes and then we had other people punching the arm hair and the chest hair. Amazing. Now this is this, not a real person. This is no, a, a that's silicone. That's a fake body cut right at the torso, and it's from Anaconda. Anaconda. And, uh, Douglas No and I both punched the beard area. It took us a day just to punch the beard and mustache. And then I did the same thing on that one where I, t I took a wig, cut off the hairline, glued it down, punched the hairline. Yes, right that's wonderful. And it's a snake it's so there. beautiful. Now let me ask you this. You told me before we began the show that when you, you punched this hair, it was very long. Yes. Then you actually had to take a clipper. Then you take clippers and, and you clip cut it, it down till, so it looks like stubble. So when you're doing that, knowing that you're going to clip it down to that degree, mm -hmm. if you make any mistake whatsoever when you are actually punching it, it's going to show up yes. as a whole. <laughs> yes. Right? Am I right? <laughs> oh yes, because the hair is cut way down to you know stubble. Right. Exactly. So so what you're doing then is as you are doing it, you are keeping in mind that this is going to be cut way down. And everything, everything must be absolutely uniform. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do punching, do you do the same? I would imagine that you do whenever, like for instance, if we lay a beard, we always blend the different colors mm -hmm. together. Same thing. Now, how do you blend the colors? I use a hackle. Well, it, there's, I use two different methods. I either use a hackle, and you secure a hackle onto a table, usually with some C-clamps. You have to be very careful, of course, we've had the discussion where you don't want to kill your hands when you're right. fixing the hair. Right. Um, or you can do it with a hairbrush, and you take a, like three or four different types of color, you put it in your hand, and you sort of, it's, it's hard to you know talk about, it's, it's easier to show you. Right. But then you, you can blend it and brush it through yes. and blend the three yes. colors. Hackling's easier because you want to keep the cut ends on a specific yes in a specific area because when you're building a wig you don't want the hair to be transferred around now Connie will you be showing that to us during your demo um, any a color blending no I don't have a hackle with me you actually. don't no well we have one you have one yeah okay maybe, then maybe, I'll do maybe that. we can get one okay um uh, no, oh here's something look at this <laughs> oh, everybody knows that this was, guy that is. was in men in black men in black check that out this was a great character that's the scene where he pulls his head back his skin back in his face. Yes. We had a variety of different appliances, a transition, and that's one of them. That is so and, uh, great. Denise so great. Uh, Livey Bear was the supervisor on that, and then I assisted her. Excellent. And, uh, I like to give people credit because they don't always get credit. That, yes, isn't that the way? You know what? <laughs> Everybody it, needs to be acknowledged. But, yeah, but more and more <laughs> we're moving toward everyone's having getting credit. That's great. And 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 you know, unfortunately, sometimes when you get credit these days especially when the films go to television, mm -hmm. uh, the credit rolls are so fast and mm -hmm. squeezed down so you don't know who in the hell did it anyway. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm hoping to do with NBA TV is to, is to make certain that those people 
who work behind the scenes and who are really the unsung heroes, mm -hmm. as you are, <laughs> of these creations, uh, are given the credit you know, that you deserve. And that's what this is all about. And, and all, obviously, we want all of our viewers to know more about the business, to understand the business, you know, in depth. I mean, these are things that you don't learn, you know, in most makeup schools. No, you, you know, don't. And, and, and this is something that you have to really work on, on your own, and have to perfect, and, and, and put your heart and your soul and your passion into it. Mm -hmm. And then someone, someday, will recognize the fact that you do that. Now, look at this. <laughs> this was the first thing I ever did when I moved to Hollywood, and... I was so blessed. I was able to work uh, with San, San, uh, Stan Winston Studios. Yes. That was my very first job. And so I made this gorilla where? You know, the one on this side. This one? I made that gorilla. Fabulous. And again, that's a spandex suit over a muscle structure with a mechanical head. Yes. What film was this for? That was for Congo. For Congo, yes. Fantastic. And this? This is Kevin Pollock. And I did this wig for him for um, a whole 10 yards, I believe was the name of it. Uh, looks a little like Fari Ackerman here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. no. They had him look similar to a real life person, but I don't remember who it could was. Have Maybe it, it could have been Fari. It could have been. I don't remember well, who it was. Well, Fari was, is like the king of science fiction. Oh, really? And he, he was the editor, the creator and the editor of a magazine that, that old timers and mid timers like mm -hmm. myself <laughs> grew up to called Famous Monsters of Filmland Magazine. And uh, this kind of looks a little like Fari. Yes, it does. <laughs> Even down to the glasses. Now, the Grinch. Oh, goodness. You work <laughs> on the Grinch. You oh. are the young lady that's responsible for punching all that green hair. Not just me. No, there was a, there was a whole team of you. There's a lot of us. Uh, now, here is, uh, this is not a commercial for Kellogg, so we'll just bring it up to here. So there <laughs> you see a hand that you did. You actually did this hand, did you not? Yeah, I had to do 22 pairs of gloves for Jim Carrey. It took me a year. 22? <laughs> 22. 22 pairs of gloves. You must have been seeing green by then. Oh, all year. And it started at the fingertips. You start at the very point of the fingertips, and it went all the way down underneath his armpit, and they were full gloves. And yes. he was just going through the gloves so hard. He also had stunt guys and standing guys and yes. all that. But we had I had to tie all of the gloves and that was my job for one year. Now the hair went forward. Yes, we had again we had So that's why you at started the at the started How long the was the hair the first hair that you would punch in at the tip? Um let's see if this was the tip probably about like that. Okay. About a foot, almost yeah. a foot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And then it, it and when do, at what point did you begin trimming and cutting? Do you do you do it along the way? And no. you take a little bit of this and you add and you and you punch a little further no, down. I or? left it all raw and then as soon as I finished each glove, it was handed off to Rick Baker himself and he cut it. Rick Baker cut he it. He is a wonderful um, hair cutter, hairdresser. Excellent. Excellent. I didn't know that he cut He hair. does phenomenal jobs. Well I would cut, think he would, you know, with all the apes yeah, he, that he's he, done. He cut um, a lot of the stuff for Planet of the Apes. Yes. He did a lot of the stuff for Mighty Joe Young. He did yes. the Grinch. He's really great with pair of scissors. He's great yes. with everything. Yes. But he's well, really maybe one day Rick will be kind enough and not so busy enough <laughs> to be able to visit us here at MUA TV. Yeah. But um, being that he's getting so much publicity from us, that who <laughs> needs to give Rick Baker publicity? I think he's doing a darn good job on his own because he's so damn talented. He's amazing. He he's certainly is. And this is a picture of Rick Baker. And uh, this is you here, I would imagine, right? This was from the Planet of the Apes making of book. And uh, I'm up in the top corner here. I was working on an orangutan yes. wig. Rick's down below. He's, yes. he's probably cutting and dressing this beard right here. Yes. But he's so involved with everything, um, every, product, every project that happens. I, I would imagine, we were talking about this before we began, that he is just so meticulous yes, with yes. everything as as he would have to be to have won as many awards and to have done as many things as he did uh, and has done and will continue to do uh, but um, uh, that's what makes a good department head he knows you know, exactly you have what to he know wants, every every phase of it yes. he's yeah. so wonderful at he's, everything he does he's a great, it's always a privilege to work for him yeah he's a great anytime. great guy here's something this is fun <laughs> Check that was that a werewolf head that we did. Um, I punched the hair on that for a movie called Cursed. It didn't do so great at the box office, but I thought the head turned out pretty nice. That's right. It's beautiful. Is this a Rick Baker project Rick also? Rick Baker project. It started at Rick's and then it ended up at Kane B. Oh, really? So it was kind of a split project. I see. Very good. 
And this is, I believe... These are my hands underneath here. Again, they never show us. <laughs> they show my hands. Right and here. I'm tying a uh, chimpanzee glove that went on Helena Bonham Carter's hand yes. for Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. And now, again, that's tying spandex. And you and tying spandex. Now, you, um, you, you did... Um, how much of the work on Planet of the Apes? How, how many... Um, did did you punch all, all of the appliances? Were they yeah, all pre-punched, pre-colored, pre-punched? Yeah, pre everything was, we had um, foreground, uh, first hero masks, we had seconds and thirds for way out into the distance. So yes. on some of the ones that, are, were, that were way out into the distance, we didn't have to do as beautiful a job because frankly we had no time yes. to build the show. We had I think six months to do three or four hundred heads. Yes. And these were ma pullover masks, That's some of them were appliances. That is amazing. Um, some of them were lace pieces. Some of them were, you know, gloves and yes. body pieces. So we had so much. Yes. We had, I think we had maybe 11 hair people in yes. Rick's shop. Plus we had five home workers. And uh, then, of course, they had people to maintain everything yes. on set. Yes. So Amazing stuff. Big crew. Big crew. Incredible. Now, you know, I, I, I was fortunate to, uh, I was coming into the business back in the mid-1960s when Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes. Oh, Josephine was in charge yes, of that. Yes, that's right. That's great. And um, I, uh, I actually worked with Ben Nye Sr. in his lab. Wow. Making the, the, the rubber grease, which we now call Appliance Foundation, wow. for that picture. That's cool. And it was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was historical. Oh, that was very historical. <laughs> in fact, I just had Murray Stein on last week was a guest uh, and uh, Maurice was one of the key makeup artists on the original Planet of the Apes. Who do we have here? It looks like somebody, uh, it looks like he's lying on the table he looking is, at himself. Actually, this was for Dave Anderson, um, another great makeup artist. This was the actor used in the um, movie and then this was a fake body of him and it was for the movie Dragonfly and they needed this um, body to breathe in and out and he was in an emergency room um, operating table yes and so I had to make this body look like him wow. so it was my, my friend Lynn Watson and I both worked on this she started it and then I ended up and they just didn't it. want to pay him to lay on the table for 18 <laughs> I hours know why they ended up. I don't know so if they paid 20 or... times more to make a body <laughs> probably <laughs> oh let's line those pockets producers and this is a close-up of... <laughs> all right it's a close-up of what the face looked like I, you know what? Thank God for whatever they're lining, but because this is what brings people like you into the picture, and to do this fantastic work, it is absolutely amazing. Thank this you. is this is a dummy. This is what a silicone body, silicone I'm sure, head. silicone head, and every one of these hairs are hand punched. Just beautiful work. And here you are, working on uh, what is this? That's a, a baboon. A baboon. And it was for the movie The Rundown. And uh, we had to do hair transfer, which my friend Deborah Galvez is going to show you shortly. And uh, we did hair transfer and we did um, flocking, which Deborah will also show you, and hair punching. Yes. So it had a, a, a people. Okay, now I got to tell you skills. something, okay? I've been in this business for a long time. I've had a makeup brush in my hand since I was seven. <laughs> All right? It's a long time ago. What were you doing with the makeup brush in your hand at seven? <laughs> <Don't ask. laughs> I like you. <laughs> I know there's you a story there. Oh, there's a big guy story there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I know everybody knows what tying is. Everybody knows what ventilating is. Now everybody knows what punching is. Mm -hmm. But what is, maybe I shouldn't ask you. Don't ask me, ask Deborah. Hair transfer. Hair transfer and flocking is a whole other method. Flocking, I know. Hair that, transfer, not too sure of. Yeah. Deborah, but we're going to find out. Yeah, Deborah's going to tell you. Because that's her forte. Now, can we look at these at pictures, or is this something that's like taboo yet? Well, this is Tropic Thunder. The movie came out a few months ago, and uh, I think it's okay to show these pictures. This well, is Tom Cruise. Well, show them. And this is some of the hair work that I did. This is a silicone cap, and silicone you did cap. all the hair punching all on the, the cap? On the top, and then the hair on the, on the um, beard was hand laid mm -hmm. and then he had a chest piece that was made mm -hmm. and he had gloves. So mm -hmm. we had a team of I think six people working on that. Is this an appliance on his neck? Those are appliances. Yeah, mm -hmm. and his nose looks like an appliance. Yes. He was great. This looks and like he was a, so tickled being in that makeup. I you know, he is a real consummate actor, I gotta tell you. I worked with Tom Cruise only one time. And Tom, you 
You remember being in New York, being interviewed by Rona Barrett? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, I made you up that day. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> um, now we have... It's the same, same, same picture. Same picture. Different this is angle. him. He's got to have a fat suit on. He had Please a fat suit tell on, me he has a fat suit on. My friend Aida Kafer, she uh, made the fat suit. And again, he had some fake arms, like sleeves, put on. Yes. And all the hairs were punched in. Yes. They ended up being, um, the hair was left a little bit long on that, which at some point he flashes his arm up and it kind of looks a little thick. But, right, right. You know, we. It didn't, hey, what the hell? It, it didn't get cut down as well as it could have, but, you know, it turned out pretty great, the whole look. And here is a, uh, another, maybe a better shot. So they ended up using crepe hair, I believe, on his face, and I believe Michelle Burke laid that. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, let's talk about this. Okay. What is the difference between crepe hair and real hair? Goodness, I don't really use crepe hair that much. I'd say that would probably be a makeup artist question. It's, it's mo much more of a tighter curl. You can buy it at a lot of uh, beauty supply stores, and some people use it for, I'm trying to think of what they use it for, maybe, um, a lot of people will put it inside beards, right. so you can tie it into yes. a beard. Yes. Some people lay it on the skin to give it a beard right. look. Right, right. Um, well, there's wool, and mm -hmm. there's real hair, mm -hmm. and then there's real hair that's been creped, mm -hmm. that's been crimped, mm -hmm. all right, for that creped look. Um, we have a young man, a young man, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be coming on by the name of Bob Romero. Oh, he's wonderful. And he is a real hoot. And uh, uh, what he did was he, uh, he, he laid this, it's wool. And I was taught how to lay hair by Ben Nye Sr. I was wow. very lucky. Yeah. And Ben used to tell me, he says, you know all these beards that we, you see in all these old 20th Century Fox films? He says, never real hair. It was always wool. Oh, Every really? one I laid was all wool. And it was a special technique that they used to make it look like Is real that hair. Floating? Yeah, that's floating. Yeah, hair, he right? floated this off. And yeah. I'll look at this, folks. Take a look at this. And this is a, a beard that Bob Romero did. Masterful job. And he floated it right off. Let's take a nice close up of this. Let me show you this. I'm not going to hold this up to your face or anything. I don't mind. But you see here? <laughs> the bearded lady. Have you? There we go. All right, well, j just in case oh, our chroma key doesn't work, let me do this. Oh, it's going to work. It's going to look, work too well. Here's the beard that, that the Bob Romero laid. And this is all what they call floated off. And it was laid on a toughy head or on a silicone or a rubber head. And then it's uh, removed and sprayed with Krylon, crystal clear Krylon. Sprayed he's through the Ubina hardware store. And uh, every makeup artist should know how to do it. If, if, even if you don't do it for film, you should know how to do it because it's an exercise, all right? It is an exercise in manual dexterity. And hey, if you get, you know, you never know, you're not gonna go run out every, every time you get a call to go run and do a, a television commercial or, or to do a beard on a soap, a, you know, a, an af, a daytime drama, they call them now. You know, and, and uh, they don't wanna spend the money to make a lace piece mm -hmm. or to have something punched, you know, unless it's something really, 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 you know, a big budget. Mm -hmm. So you need to lear learn how to do this too, you know? All right, anyway. Back to this and away from Bob Romero. Um, we have uh, a lot of people out there that are asking themselves, gee, how many jobs are available for people who punch hair? Oh, goodness. It seems as if the digital world is taking our jobs away, unfortunately. Um, there used to be a lot of really big creature shows, and now their jobs are just diminishing. So there's a handful of us who work in uh, creature effects. There's probably, for people who do what I do, and that's wig making, punching, flocking, transfer, laying hair, um, there's probably, I'd say about 10 of us who yes. do that. Yes. And then everybody else either is a wig maker or they do what Deborah does, and that's yes. transfer and flocking. Yes. So we, there's a variety of skills. But of course, the more you know, the more you're going to work. Absolutely, yeah. So. But being that there's only 10 or 15 of you, yeah. Um, I'm sure that the labs are just scurrying like crazy to, 
you know, to get to you first. Yeah, it depends on, um, it's funny, it's, it's always all or nothing. It's either yes. feast or famine. Yes. Either everybody's working and they're just, we're getting more and more calls right. and we're working into the night at right. other shops. Like right. when I was working on Mighty Joe Young, yes. I was at Rick's all day long yes. and then I would leave at five o'clock and go across town to Kevin Yeager's yes. and punch those heads for face off. Yes. So when it's busy, we, we work yes. because we know that the dry months are going to come. Yes, yes. So. Well, rest up. Right sure. now. <laughs> I hope the work comes. Because soon. the work is on its I way. Hope so. We're all just wanting it. Yeah. Like, wow, it's a little dry spell for the rest of you around the world out there in Europe and Russia and South America who are watching and Australia. Uh, well, maybe in Australia they may be feel, feeling it too. It's just a little dry here for work right now. Production is at a little bit of a low, but it will pass as things always yes, they do. do. We have I'm one of the few people working. I'm lucky. I have only a week left on this film, but yeah, I, yeah. I'm one of the very few people working. So. Yeah. Well, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to congratulate you and wish you nothing but the best of continued good fortune. Thank you. You know, because I think we make our own luck. You know, so. A lot of hard work. <laughs> a, a lot of hard work, isn't it? It really is. And, okay, and one more thing. Hmm. For all of the people out there, all, right now 4,000 of them, and I'm sure when this is shown again, we might show this again next year, there may be 20,000 people watching. We, because we're, we're going in different directions, away from makeup, we're doing, you know, celebrity inter, uh, interviews as well, and you name it, cinematographers, and we're just, we're, we're, we're widening our horizons. And the thing is, is that there may be more next year when this is played. So for all of those out there who are interested in getting into any phase, of our profession what great words of wisdom can you give them and if you could talk directly into that camera i would appreciate it right there yes words of wisdom uh practice 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 <laughs> everything that you learn just keep practicing uh take everybody take something from everybody you work with and try and learn from everybody yes um never think that you know it all because there's always someone who knows more than you isn't that the truth and um I just keep, I'm just thinking it. you just got to keep doing it yeah you just you can't ever give up there's going to be dry spells there's going to be times when everybody's not working then times when everybody's working and you can't give up if you really love it you just have to keep doing it that's right love is the key word love is key love and passion enthusiasm and never 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 losing interest nope. in what you do always looking into the future everybody can do this that's right honey okay <laughs> Connie, I want to thank you so much thank for you being for here. You on. It's been, it's honestly, it's been a real pleasure thank to you. have you here. And I've learned, I've learned a lot. I really have. I know, I didn't know anything. I mean, I knew about hair punching, <laughs> but I didn't really, you know, know to any degree the amount that I have just learned by having this. This, even though it's short, it's been a very, very informative conversation. As much as I've learned working in theater i learned twice the amount working in film and yes. i've learned it from other people i've worked from yes and you just pick things up along the way and that's how you get your skills i don't think there's a school that teaches everything no. that you do no no you just learn it along no, maybe the way. you should come work over here and teach some classes sometime okay you know we'll see we'll see hey <laughs> that was connie chriswell one of the geniuses the unsung oh. geniuses behind all of the hairy creatures that have been scaring you for all these years and or making you laugh. This is Joe Blasco, and you stay tuned because we've got a lot more makeup and hair programming right here on MUA-TV.